This is a warning from the Apostle Peter himself. Out of all the scriptures in the Bible, out of all the scriptures in the New Testament, this has got to be at least one of the top five most overlooked and most misunderstood scriptures. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. I'm going to read it through first, and then we're going to talk about it. Therefore, beloved, seeing that you look for these things, be diligent to be found in peace, without defect and blameless in his sight. Regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you, as also in all of his letters, speaking in them of these things. In those, there are some things that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unsettled twist, as they also do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing these things beforehand, beware, lest being carried away with the error of the wicked, you fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Now let's go back up here to verse 14. The Apostle Peter says, Therefore, beloved, seeing that you look for these things, be diligent to be found in peace without defect. That word defect in most other translations is spotless. Now notice, everything that the Apostle Peter is talking about here is couched in the idea of being spotless, without defect, blameless in the sight of God. So having this as the context, obeying God, without defect, spotless, blameless, with that as the context, Peter goes on to say, regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you, as in all of his letters, speaking in them of these things. In those, that is his letters, there are some things that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unsettled twist, as they also do to the other scriptures, to their own destruction. So what is the Apostle Peter talking about here? What is this warning all about? It is a grave warning. It is a serious warning. It is a warning, warning you of twisting or being ignorant of the scriptures, being ignorant of what Paul's talking about and misunderstanding it, misinterpreting it to your own destruction. Now, let's just pack up for a minute now. Today, more than ever, people are ignorant of the context of Paul's letters. Paul was a man who was raised, spiritually speaking, under Gamaliel, one of the, one of the great Judaic teachers, one of the great leaders of Judaism. So when Paul speaks, he speaks in that context, not to mention the context of the entirety of Scripture. Remember, when Paul wrote his letters, his letters were not considered to be Scripture until many, many years later, hundreds of years later. So the scriptures were the Tanakh, or what we call the Old Testament, and other scriptures such as those that are found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Those are what was considered to be scripture. Those are the scriptures that all of the apostles based their faith on. Those are the scriptures, the so-called Old Testament, is what all of the apostles used as a foundation for their sermons, for their preaching, for the gospel. So Peter says here, when we're talking about being spotless, blameless, without defect, i.e. obeying God, i.e. practicing righteousness, living a lifestyle of righteousness without spot, without defect and blameless. In that context, a lot of people like to quote Paul to oppose that. Oh, but Christ is the end of the law. Oh, but it, we're not saved by works. Oh, but we're not under the law, etc., etc., etc. So if back in those days, in the days when you could actually walk and talk with those who actually spent three years with the Lord, if they could misunderstand Paul, how much more could we 
2,000 years removed from that context. So Peter says, in the context of being without defect, spotless, blameless, in the sight of the Lord, people twist and misunderstand, are ignorant of the context and the true meaning of Paul's letters to their own destruction. And we see it more so today than ever before in history. Whenever you talk to anybody about being without defect, being spotless and blameless in the sight of God, sure enough, somebody's going to raise an objection and quote Paul against that. Oh, it's not by works. To their own destruction. Because they use Paul, or at least their interpretation of Paul, to justify their lawlessness, to justify their spots, to justify their sin. I said it before and I'll say it again. The Apostle Peter is one of the all-time geniuses of Christianity. He knew the Lord better than most other people ever did and ever would. He was one of the three that was allowed on the mountain of transfiguration. He's one of the three that was allowed in the inner circles when Jesus was raising the dead. Time after time, even to his own disciples, Jesus said, okay, you nine you stay behind. I'm taking Peter, James, and John with me. Peter, James, and John had experiences with the Lord that nobody else ever had. Peter, James, and John knew the Lord better than the other nine ever did. And by the way, way, way better than Paul ever did. Remember in Acts chapter 1, one of the requirements to find someone to replace Judas was that you had to have been there from the beginning of Jesus' ministry and been an eyewitness of everything. Paul does not qualify. Peter was there. He is one of the geniuses of Christianity. If Peter says that some of the things that Paul writes is hard to understand, you better believe it's hard to understand. It's almost like Einstein saying, well, this book of physics is hard to understand. Listen, if Einstein says it's hard to understand, you better believe it's hard to understand. If Peter says that some of the things that Paul writes is hard to understand and many people misinterpret it, they're ignorant of it, they twist it to their own destruction, you better believe that many people are ignorant of it, misinterpret it, and use it to their own destruction. If Paul says anything that seems to contradict Peter, James or John, especially Jesus himself, you better take Peter, James, or John, especially Jesus himself, over Paul. Because just perhaps, perhaps, we don't quite understand what Paul is saying. Perhaps is one of those things that the Apostle Peter warned us about. This is a warning. Don't use Paul's letters. Don't use anything that Paul wrote to justify your spots and your sin.